it's really not very hard to pick a banjo. Doing a few simple things over and over again, like walking. Of course, it took us about two years to learn how to walk. But let me show you. I'll show you, give you a banjo lesson in 15 seconds. You get some notes with the back of your fingernail. And some notes with your thumb. And some notes with your left hand. Put it all together. Little birdie, little birdie, what makes you fly so high? It's because I'd be a true little bird and I do not fear to die. What makes your wings so blue? It's because I've been a grieving, grieving after you, little birdie, little birdie. What makes your head so red? Well, after all that I've been through, it's a wonder I ain't dead. Little birdie, oh little birdie, come sing to me a song. I have a short while to be here, and a long time to be gone. Mr. Seagar, Mr. I never, I never uh, uh, would this be a leading question to ask you what a song in a stone, um, I, I, I never have heard what the, the movie's about. The, what the movie's means. kind of a montage uh, relating the songs I sing to what's going on in America now. Hmm. And uh, the hopeful things, the despair, uh, all tangled up. And I suppose some person would look at the movie and say, there's no plot here. It's just a big montage from beginning to end. But if you are following what's going on in America, it fits in. Where does the stone to, to, in the title come in? Well, about uh, four years ago, when King was assassinated, I went down to sing at Duke University. Uh, there was a sit-down strike of white college students. Uh, they demanded that the president resign from his country club. It was white only. They demanded that they give more black scholarships to the university and pay higher wages to the black employees, that union that was on strike, uh, the uh, janitors and all. Mm -hmm. And I went down, and there were about 2,000 very pure-minded young people. They didn't want any violence. They were going to carry on the spirit of Martin Luther King. I said, why hasn't this been on TV? This is history making. The first time a batch of white university students in the South go out on a limb for black people. And they said, oh, we called up CBS, we called up NBC uh, News, but they said they couldn't spare any cameramen. Uh, but they said, let us know if there's any violence, we'll send somebody down. <laughs> I felt blood just rush through me and I, I reached down, picked up a stone from the gravel driveway. We were singing out in the courtyard and I said, I don't know, I've never st thrown a stone at a person, and I never will, because I've had stones thrown at me. It's no fun. But uh, if I ever find myself in a news office and they say they're not going to cover a good story because there's no violence, I don't know what I'll do. I, I still carry it around. You still have a stone ready, day, ready to let go? Would well, you agree with Mr. Agnew, then, that the television doesn't report enough good news? Uh, in a sense, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I think television is the greatest hope of the world, but at the moment, in every part of the world, it's in some sort of a straitjacket. So maybe in one place it's a political straitjacket, another place it's a commercial straitjacket, another place just a pure poverty. Say it's a little country, uh, often Africa or Asia, and to start a television station, you have to have a half a million dollars a year. And uh, 
Yet this medium is the hope of the world, I think, because it can leap the language barrier. Uh, and we, instead of people getting tangled up and killing each other over words, 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 you can see the pictures, you can see each other. I'd like to open up the TV, I'd like to see the John Burt Society and the Ku Klux Klan and the Communist Party too, and the socialists and the nudists and Lord knows what. Everybody's got, the air belongs to everyone. That's supposedly the idea of democracy, that you let all these ideas come out and yeah. people are able to distinguish what's... Uh... To a certain extent, the freedom of speech that we have in America is bottled up. Uh, it's, it's as though they say, yes, you can say anything you want, uh, you can write anything you want, but remember, uh, prime time is family time. <laughs> Family time. <laughs> have, have you, you were on the, um, on the Johnny Cash show yeah. a couple of times. Was it, did, did he have to go on over somebody's protest? Oh, Johnny uh, fought hard for me, and that's in, in this movie. Yeah. Uh, Johnny tried to get me on his show, and they wouldn't let him the first year. Second year, he was in a stronger position, and he said, if I sign a contract with you, you've got to let me have Pete on. Because uh, he'd been on my show, a little teeny uh, UHF station in Newark. He came up and appeared for an hour, free, wouldn't take any pay, he and June. And uh, he fought for me. At the same time, he got a lot, well, I don't know how many letters saying, what do you mean by having this traitor? Oh, uh, what's a traitor? I, I, I don't argue with these people. Somebody's told them a bunch of lies. And... Uh, I figure that instead of me arguing with him, I'll simply make as good music as I can. I don't want to use that stone. I want to communicate. That's, that's, that good news stone. I don't think I would want to see a news show of just good news, though. I mean, it would oh, be no, pretty no, no, boring no, no, no. hearing the names of all the people who did oh, commit Oh, listen, a crime what's good news for case. somebody is bad news for somebody else. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Those 2,000 students sitting in the, in the courtyard of Duke University was good news to me, mm -hmm. but it's bad news to the Ku Klux Klan. If, if anything really does happen that's really good, though, it, it will be news these days. I mean, there's so much. Uh, it's just incredible. Thing. Yeah, Didn't the Today Show for a while do a segment of, uh, of good news? That one well, point? take it. There's, there's, probably an, a very short there's an segment, information but, uh, explosion. There's an information explosion. And if you don't watch out, you'll just go crazy. Yeah. You have to be kind of a practicing schizophrenic. And at, table, at times, you just close the door and say, now, I'm going to uh, close everything out and just be with my family for a while. have too much information. Yeah, I know that feeling. Uh, so you have a clip from your film, and, we, uh, and I must get it in because we're getting behind. Let's take, uh, should you tell us a little bit about well, it? Well, uh, most of the movie is not actually on me. I'm singing a song, uh -huh. and this extraordinary cameraman, Bob Elfstrom, he's the one who made the Johnny Cash movie, too. Uh -huh. He uh, roved through America, and he filmed old people and young people, and this is of a kid. Uh, because the song, the song was written by a Turkish communist named Nazim Hikmet, a famous poet. He spent most of his life in jail uh, because the Turkish government didn't like him. And finally he got out. I think he went up to Moscow. He died there. But this is a poem he wrote about Hiroshima. And it was translated by an American pacifist. And I made a... I, a guy up in Harvard made a tune for an Irish ballad, and I fitted the tune to the words now, who wrote that song? I don't know, about 15 people all worked on it. Yeah. And all I do is sing the song and you'll see what this cameraman did with it. Yeah. 